Okay, so Zach and Jerry, um, can you tell us how The Falling and the Rising came to be? What's the backstory and what inspired you to write this beautiful piece of musical storytelling? Um, Sergeant Ben Hilgert, now Master Sergeant Ben Hilgert, uh, had, came from the world of opera. Uh, he is in the U.S. Army Field Band and Chorus, which is an amazing world-class organization. Um, they, they tour constantly, incessantly all over the United States, sharing the kind of the, the Army's message. And he went to his superiors and said, I have this idea. They had worked on some opera scenes. Uh, and done some productions of short pieces because there were so many amazing singers uh, within the chorus who were just craving uh, doing opera again. And he went to his uh, colonel and said, hey, I really want, uh, I have this idea of at this point creating an interview-based work where it would just be, he was thinking maybe 15 minutes. Let's just kind of start there and make that happen. Um, and his amazing and beautiful good idea, which was filled with a lot of passion on his end, uh, went from 15 minutes very quickly uh, to a full length uh, chamber opera. Um, it was his, certainly his brainchild and the army was so gracious in setting up interviews with Zach, myself uh, and Ben, uh, everywhere from Walter Reed uh, uh, to uh, Fort Meade, um, where else were we, Zach? We, I felt um, like we, we bounced Meyer. around uh, Fort Myers as well. The old guy. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and so we interviewed uh, roughly around 30 or so people. And um, all three of us together, we got to listen and kind of receive uh, the messages. And we're, we were asked to devise an idea. And when Opera Memphis did it, uh, I think the following fall or something or spring, whenever they did it, um, Ned had this idea to start to involve a volunteer uh, chorus, veterans chorus. Right. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, that kind of changed the piece in a, in a really brilliant way. It really kind of locked in that community involvement um, mm -hmm. and outreach. And I mean, that was, I, I think they had like 25 or so people. Yeah. I think the, the oldest person on stage was uh, a battle the a 93 year old battle of the bulge <laughs> that wow. its ranking was a two-star major general and the youngest was like i don't know night 20 <laughs> in oh, rotc wow. or something like that so yeah it was it was it was really um it was really and their audience was one third at least one third every night um military and military family which wow is a lot <laughs> for, for opera um <laughs> Uh, so, so the first, first interview, like, I think it was two hours long. We didn't, I mean, like we hadn't done anything yet. So like, it was just like, okay, let's see what happens. And so, um, Tyler, who I think is like 19, 19 yeah. or 20 at the time. Oh, and, oh. Um, in the cafeteria of Walter Reed. Yeah, oh in the cafeteria of Walter Reed. With his Nin mom. 19 like, years old. Yeah. With his mom. Um, he, had, he was in a coma for, I think, three months. Uh, it, his, the Humvee, you know tipped over oh. um and uh he had a tb he had a traumatic brain injury and he was still recovering and, but at the end of the interview and i'll tee you up jerry oh you, you know, I, no i i, I was I, I always say that i was woefully unprepared to to end the interview uh i kind of ran out of questions and it was time and i just kind of casually said so what's you know what's next for you and he looked at me in this very direct, very clear way. And he said, there's nothing else. There's just right here and right now, which became one of the major themes in the opera. Like to hear that coming out of him and that it being, being a rebel, like this isn't a kid that, that spent time meditating. Like right. he was doing pull-ups and push-ups since I think he said he was nine because he wanted to do special forces. He was like, he was so one tracked and that, you know, not stairs. I mean, I am stereotyping, but like he was not thinking about those larger questions of presence and, and spiritual and his dreams of joining the special forces done. Like yeah. he was a specialist with the hopes of, you know, 
going up and maybe going to ranger school or, or, you know, going to seal school and all this and, and done. And so like for him to have that kind of maturity and now he goes around giving lectures and, and talks on, on that. And so it's, yeah, it's, I mean, like, it, like a horrible blessing, but a, a an interesting like take on it. And it was just, it was so like, Oh my gosh, like this is, this is the story. 